this is amen folks we are alive today we are moving today what an amazing day that we that the lord has given to us that that he has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it folks folks whoever is following along with the script every week i pray that you get into youtube or you get into your music area wherever you listen to your music on online and um if you could follow along with us with the music, you could go and um, check out Walk On with the lyrics that we provide you. And also, uh, today's music is also Shout to the Lord. Amen. Uh, please, please do and worship with us. Amen. Today is also Communion Sunday. So I pray that you do stay and receive your communion today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Um, Today's tithe and offerings are uh, scriptures is Matthew ten forty two. Jesus had promised, whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means, <laughs> he shall by Ouch, excuse me. When you give to, he shall by no means, okay, the name of the disciple is surely I say to you, by no means lose his reward. Amen. When you give to Jesus' Lord Fellowship Worldwide International, folks, you're given a virtual cup of cold water to tens and to thousands daily. How, Pastora, do you ask? By enabling Jesus' Lord Fellowship Worldwide International to daily satisfy your spiritual thirst throughout the virtual world, worldwide, as you receive huh, the Word of God, where we minister to homes throughout the world. Amen. We also supply the needs by, by posts worldwide daily. Amen. Please consider sending us a regular tithe and offering. And this, uh, I recommend to, to those who are not fellowshipping in a church building. Uh, but to those who are fellowshipping in a church building, when the Lord leads your heart to send us a, a gift or donation, please go ahead and do. Amen. Uh, to this ministry. Amen. Please consider sending us a regular tithe and offering. May the Lord richly bless each and every one of you this day to years ahead to come. Please consider, okay, we do pray that our fellowship does minister to you from Sundays all the way to Saturdays throughout the whole week on a daily basis, folks. May the Lord richly bless you. Have the most blessed Jesus-filled day. We are available to assist in every spiritual need that you may have daily in every areas of your life through this ministry of Jesus as Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Amen. Today's sermon, folks, today's sermon is yield to be healed. Yield to be healed. Amen. Before we go on, let us pray today for for uh, Rosemary Gutierrez, her children's deal, her children's uncle from her ex-husband's side has risen, who has been very close to Rosemary as well throughout the years. Um, let us pray right now, due to all of our condolences, goes out to Rosemary, her children, and and all of her family at this time amen and this also happens to be the same weekend of her mother who has risen a few years ago amen so let us pray for rosemary in the family right now at this time amen amen and amen um let us also lift up every prayer warriors worldwide that they may have the lord's strength as they pray that a hedge of protection may surround them and all of their family and loved ones and those who have furthered from the Lord. 
let them draw closer. Let them just see the bright light of Christ within their hearts and come closer. Amen. Let us also pray for the needs of every local church, including the needs of Jesus as Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Let us ask the Lord our God for provisions so that his church may be able to continue the work that he has set aside for it. Let us pray for those that have been called to leadership in his church, that they may have strength and a godly vision at all times. Let us place a hedge of protection around leaders and all of their families so that they may be healed from all health situations. Amen. Let us pray that as we listen today, our hearts and our inner soul man program, amen, will be open to the living words so that we may feed freely upon today's message and we will drink from the Holy Spirit. Amen. We welcome all of the national folks and all of the international. I get so excited when I invite you guys in. I do. So let us welcome all the national and international fellowship members and visitors around the globe as you receive the spiritual nutrition of the Lord's word. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you today around the globe. My name is Senior Pastora Dr. Diana Brevon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. I do not see the announcements here. Recently, we had an announcement from Deacon Matthew stating that he will be doing, starting soon, um, his teachings that he always posted every week. That I do not see that announcement here before we get started through the grace of God. So, um, today's sermon is Yield to be Healed. Yield to be healed. Amen. Matthew chapter 20, verses 29 to 30. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting on that wayside. When they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still. And he called out and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them. And Jesus touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight. And they followed him. In verse 29, folks, we see that there's a great multitude following Jesus. It would be easy for the enemy to convince us that we are just some insignificant person compared to everyone else in, in the church and even in the world that our problems are not all that important. But verse 2, it tells us about these two blind men. I like that there are two blind men in this text because one blind man might say to someone that they are alone and the only one with that problem. But notice here, notice here that, that, okay, but notice here that there are two people with identical problems. Amen. Sometimes we may feel like we are the only ones who have certain problems in our lives. And, and you might be surprised to find out that, that you're not alone. You're not alone. I think that it's important to realize because, because of being all alone, it's a very lonely place, folks. It's a very, very lonely place to be all alone. 
Amen? Amen? Especially when you're suffering. Matthew chapter 20, verse 30. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside. When they heard that Jesus passed by <coughs> and cried out saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. The scripture here says that they cried out. Now, there has been some times in my life when I cried out. I did it just the other day when I stopped my, my, my body on, on an ottoman in the living room. Then I stopped my body towards the lift of the, of the back of the car. <laughs> I heard a, 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 like a, a little crack and honestly... I thought I broke my body, you know, I thought I broke my toe. And with crippling osteoporosis through the grace of God, uh-uh. You know, I've cried out a few times in my life. And it wasn't always because I was in some kind of physical pain, amen, folks? Amen? But of all the people that were there that day, these two people are the only ones crying out. At that very moment. It makes me wonder. What all had gone on. In, in their lives. Amen. To get them to the point. Finally crying out. We don't naturally. Or easily cry out to God. Amen. Generally. We try to take care of the problem ourselves. We try to fix the issues. With our own abilities. Our own resources, our own talents, our own strength. Amen. We don't usually yield to God right away. It generally takes some bumps on the hand. It usually takes some bumps on the head. If I could put it that way. Amen. <laughs> Amen, folks. Um, like the woman with the issue of blood who I represent so much with. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 20, we usually turn to Jesus after we have already spent all that we have on the things that we think should help us. But what ultimately makes us worse than we were in the beginning? We may not want to say this aloud to the other Christians around us but sometimes sometimes folks Jesus is not always our first resort when something's going on in our lives sometimes we turn to all kinds of stuff long before we finally are in depression and, and desperation we turn to him at that point it's more of a crying out than a given in. Amen, folks? Have mercy. Have mercy. Like, he would only help you because you are finally begging for help. With all the stuff that goes on in the world at times. And what goes on in our personal lives, we find it so hard to yield to God. To stop and say, okay, Lord, I can't do this by myself. I need your help. There are multiple examples of people in the, in the scriptures who obviously had problems in their lives. But they yielded more and more to his presence and his will. He was able to work in their situations. It wasn't until they reached out to him that he was able to do something for them the woman with the issue of blood the man with the withered hand the leprous man who cried out to him these were people who for so many years if not their whole lives they struggled not only with the per their personal and their physical challenges 
of their situations, but also with their emotional wounds and with their scars. The social stigma of it all is that limited who were and what they were capable of. All the pain, all the suffering, all of the mental anguish until finally they cried out to God. Until finally they said, I can't do this by myself. I need the Lord's help. And that's who Jesus was. That's why he came so that he could be touched by the feeling of their infirmities and, and hear all of their voices. Sometimes we are so burdened with so much that we forget that God wants to lift that burden off for us. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Now it came to pass as they went that they entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she helps me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. He told Martha, you're busy about so many things. Mary, she's being sensitive and you're being busy. Right now is the time to be sensitive. Right now is the time to hear from our Father God. We need to recognize folks that those times in our lives when God is speaking to us and when he's trying to direct and guide our lives, not fall backwards and go another route because you want to. We think that being busy is an excuse to not make time for God and give him opportunity to speak into our lives. We'd rather put on a great feast for him when all the while, he just wants to sit back and talk to our hearts just for a little while. We wonder why sometimes, why he doesn't even answer our prayers when we want him to. We wonder sometimes why the job or the health or the family does not even change right when we first ask. Many times it's because as James 4 verse 3 says, James 4 verse 3, ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. We don't really know what to pray for. All we're doing is responding to circumstances that we're going through and the pain that we're going through. What we don't realize is that God is working something out for us while we're facing those storms. But he needs us to yield to him, folks. He needs us to turn to him. We're going in all different directions here. We're doing all kinds of things. We're trying this and we're trying that and even praying for the wrong things. But Jesus is saying, stop. Jesus is saying, stop. Romans chapter 6 verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. His servants ye are to whom ye obeys, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Here's the problem for many of us. 
much of the time. Amen? Here's the problem for many of us much of the time. Amen? We don't want to yield. I have green lights, but I hate red lights. Green lights means go. That's what I want to do. I want to get to there. I want to go. But that red light means stop. I hate stopping. Stopping makes me late. Stopping keeps me from getting where I want to go. Stopping gets in the way of my agenda. And then there are these little yellow signs at certain intersections that means yield, folks, yield. Now, a lot of people say that a yield signs are, huh? I wonder what I was supposed to be looking out for. In fact, much of the time, we totally ignore the yield sign. Why? Because we have an agenda to accomplish. We have a direction that we want to go to. Amen. We have a destination to get to. But what that, but what that yield sign is saying to you is, what that yield sign is saying to that traveler is to give way to the people who are coming from the other direction. Let them go first. Slow down. Stop if you have to. Pull over even. Let them go instead of you. We wonder why Jesus hasn't stepped into our situation sometimes. Could it be that we're in too big of a hurry trying to do things ourselves just to eat? just to yield and to let him do what he wants to do in our lives at that very moment revelations chapter 3 20 amen are you ready let us receive from the word of god behold i stand at the door and i knock if any man hears my voice and opens that door i will come in to him and yet will sup with him and he with me how many of us folks can say that we truly feel that god has come into our situation that his presence can be felt that his spirit is operating in situations of our homes and in our lives amen and so we have to think about and realize that his spirit Man, program wants to work in our lives. Amen. He said in the latter part of Isaiah 43, 13. In Isaiah 43, 13. Yea, before the day was, I am he. He and there is none that can deliver out of my hands. I will work and who shall let it when we yield to him we open up a realm that's not available to most people because it's only open to those who yields to him those that opens the door those who cries out those who are willing to do whatever he says to do to be in his will it's really only open to those who yields it themselves that's why prayer is so very important because it opens the lines of communication to god amen our prayers needs to be more than hey god i need your help as some last minute desperate cries for help Amen. It needs to be something that he can speak to us through and we can hear from him. And it's not just saying that we do it when something terrible is going to be in our lives. It's something that we do throughout the whole day. Amen. The Bible says in Luke chapter 18 verse 1. 
And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Amen. Not to faint. In other words, let those lines of communication with God be open at all times, folks. Don't allow circumstances to keep you from communicating with him. Do not. Sometimes all of this stuff called life can really discourage us and cause us to doubt and to wander. But in the middle of all of that doubting, somehow we've got to allow our understanding to realize the miraculous of our lives and the potential of our situations to cause us to, to, to come to a place of yielding, saying, I give to the Lord, not allowing our flesh to get in the way of what God is trying to do. Why? Because he's trying to work in, in each of our lives. He is trying to work out the complexities of it all. He's trying to help us find our way. He's trying to heal us. He's trying to minister to us. He's trying to guide us and to help us become closer to him. It takes us yielding. It takes us yielding to him and allowing him to work in our lives. Giving in and letting go when we want to fight to hang on to, to, to things that prevents us from fulfilling his purpose in our lives. There does need to come a point where we say, I give this to you, Father God, Lord Jesus. There comes to a point where we say, I can't fight this battle any longer. I cannot fight this battle any longer. This battle belongs to you, O oh Father God. And when we give it to him, it's a fearful thing. When we give it to him, we put it in the hands of a jealous God, an angry God, a loving God. A God who is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. A God who is compassionate. A God who is our Heavenly Father. A God who would give His own life so that we could have a relationship and salvation with Him. This God that we serve, He is well and able to help to, to, to help to help us through our storms. He is able to calm the seas. He is able to say, peace be still. But he's waiting for someone to say, I need your help. I can't do this on my own. I need your help. I can't do this on my own, Father God. He's waiting for us to yield, folks. He is waiting for us to yield. My name is Senior Pastora, Dr. Diana Brevan of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. I pray that you have received to have today's message. Amen. Let us go into the spirit of Holy Communion. The Holy Communion, known as the Lord's Supper, this represents the greatest expression of God's love for his people, folks. Two items are being used here today. Amen. In this Holy Communion. Amen. The bread, which represents Jesus' body that was scourged and broken before and during his crucifixion. And the cup, which represents his shed blood. When Jesus walked on the earth, he was vibrant and his body was full of life and health. He was never sick. But before Jesus went to the cross, folks, he was badly scourged by the Roman soldiers. And his body was torn apart. 
as he hung on the cross. At the cross, God also took our infirmities, folks. He took all of our sicknesses. He took all of our diseases. And he put them on Jesus. Original, perfect, and healthy body. So that we can walk in divine health. That's why the Bible says, by his stripes, we are healed. Please jot this down. Isaiah 53, verse 5. 1 Peter 2, 24. Amen. Please highlight this in your word if it's not highlighted. In Luke chapter 22, verse 20, the Lord Jesus tells us that the cup is a brand new covenant in my blood. And the Apostle Paul tells us that the blood of Jesus brings forgiveness of sins. Amen. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 14, also Ephesians chapter 1, 7. Why do believers partake of the Holy Communion? Besides being born again in Christ, a healthy body, a healthy mind, they are the greatest blessings that anyone can have. And the Holy Communion is God's ordained channel of healing and wholeness. On the night that he was betrayed, folks, Jesus ate his last supper with his disciples and knowing what he would accomplish through his sacrifice. He instituted the Holy Communion in Luke chapter 22, verse 19 to 20 and 1 Corinthians 11, 24 to 25. Those of you who has your, your discs, your crackers, and, and, and your and your blood please have that prepared soon amen his loving instruction is that we are to remember him as we partake of the holy communion jesus wanted us conscious of how his body was broken for our wholeness and his blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins whenever we partake in this consciousness we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 26. Today, folks, when we partake of the, of the bread and we are declaring that Jesus' health and divine life flows in our mortal bodies, and when we partake of the cup, we are declaring that we are forgiven. And we have been made righteous. Amen. We have been made righteous. Jesus' blood gives us right standing before God. And we can go boldly into God's presence. Hebrews 4, 16. When we pray, we can be sure that God hears us. How do I partake of the Holy Communion? Before you partake, remember that the Holy Communion is not a ritual to be observed, but a blessing to be received. Amen? Because it's not a ritual. There's no prescribed bread or there's no special drink required. In the Last Supper, Jesus used whatever he had in the table bread commonly eaten at the supper and whatever they were drinking to partake first hold the bread in your hands and let us say thank you father god for the gift of your son by the stripes that fell on his back my body is healed from the crown of my head to the very soles of my feet Every cell, every organ, every function of my body is healed, restored, renewed in the name of Jesus. I believe and I receive it. Let us eat of the bread. 
and then let us eat of the bread. Next, let us take the cup in your hands and let us speak, Lord Jesus, thank you for your precious blood. You're sin free. You are disease free. You are poverty free. Life is in your blood and your shed blood has removed every sin from my life. Through your blood, I am forgiven of all my sins, past, present, and future, and made completely righteous. Today, I celebrate and I partake of the inheritance of the righteous, which is the preservation, healing, wholeness, and provision. Thank you, Father God, Lord Jesus, for loving me. Amen. Now let us drink the wine. Come join Dr. Deanna Bravon. Come join our staff. Come join all worldwide prayer warriors and all who are new, all who are present, and all who have been a part in prayer. And join us as we celebrate your celebration of praises together. Amen. As, as you receive the Lord's answers to your prayers. Amen. As we celebrate with you. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you where Jesus is Lord. Amen. For more details, amen. For more details within your, uh, within every detail of your life. Um, if you need to contact Senior Pastora Dr. Diana Brevon, please contact me at the headquarters, J-I-L-F, W-W-I at yahoo.com. Amen. If you need to contact me and you're unable to, especially right now, uh, somebody has taken my iPad for about a week and a half now. Uh, so I am limited right now. I only um, have time to roll before the computer besides my daily schedule. So through the grace of God, I, um, I'm behind my desktop. Amen. But um, through the grace of God, but the time that I'm away from my desktop, I always had that pad with me. Amen. So I could check in and receive your prayer requests, receive your Bible studies, your certification Bible studies, which I am so proud soon to sign. Amen. And, and to grade you for a good and faithful job well done you have been doing this year. Amen. Please contact Deacon Matthew Helmich at Matt. 76021 at Yahoo for any of that that I just mentioned or also Rosemary Gutierrez Amen um, She is our prayer coordinator Try to contact her at Rosemary Gutierrez Rosemary 1197 at gmail.com Amen Rosemary 1197 at gmail.com I want to praise God for each and every one of you here today for visiting and for receiving the living Word of God worldwide within this worldwide church ministry amen I look forward to receiving from you again from hearing from you again amen uh, please contact the headquarters J I L F W W I at yahoo.com and communicate with me send me out prayer requests send me out um, emails amen emails of, uh, also if you're gifted in in writing letters of encouragement please send them out to me because there's so many people I send out packages to every week of our our, our weekly devotions through the grace of God I send out various who needs encouragement who needs to be built up and lifted up Amen. Um, we are here to assist you. We are here to encourage you. May the Lord richly bless you as you live daily in the intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father. Amen. Again, would you need prayer for anything, please contact me. Or if not, go to any of our websites. Amen. And, and contact us. Amen. The prayer requests. Um, also, I, I gave you 
them, um, our staff and our prayer warriors around the globe will be available to pray for you 24-7 every day. Amen to years to come. Amen. Your senior pastor, Dr. Diana Brevon, what I do at your prayer requests, I print them out. I put them in your prayer journal and I anoint you fervently in prayer. In prayer, I anoint you fervently. So I look forward through the grace of God in receiving your prayer requests and your updates. Amen. Of every detail of your life. Please go to the www.jesusislordfellowship.bravehost.com. Please go there and fill out the guest book if you have not filled it out yet. I would like to hear from you. Amen. And those of you who would like to study the living word of God, we are in the book of Luke. Amen. And through the grace of God, Luke has been moving fervently this year. Amen. Uh, those of you who separate from the book of Luke at times are separating from the most powerful book, one of the most powerful gospels. Amen. I'm not talking about those who had to leave due to family issues, but I'm talking about if you close the doors out in Luke, you're closing out the doors of him coming out of your heart and over flooding you with his grace, with his mercy, oh, with his hope, love, peace, patience, kindness. You know, this is the, the, the one of the books of the Gospels that comes right out of the word at you as you're continuing to study the living word of God. Amen. Uh, may the Lord richly bless you, guide you, have the most blessed Jesus filled day. Time is running out and I love you all. Have the most blessed Jesus filled rest of your Sunday. Have the most blessed Jesus filled rest of the days ahead this week. I look forward from hearing from you. Please join us at any of the websites. Please receive the daily devotions of Dr. Deanna Brevon and of my, of my team. Amen. We look forward to receiving um, even a comment from you or a letter from you to let us know that you are receiving the Lord's word, that the Lord is speaking to you through that word. In Jesus' mighty name, I praise your holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all.